Hi, Oprah Daily Insiders. I'm Dr. Cara Natterson. And I'm Vanessa Kroll Bennett. And we are the authors of This Is So Awkward, Modern Puberty Explained. Not getting through to your pubescent kid? Well, here's a few things you should never say to them. Number one, calm down. No one in the history of the world has ever calmed down because someone told them to calm down. Cara, why not? Well, first of all, if they're escalated, if they're hot, if they're at an 11 and you're telling them to calm down, you are, instead of helping bring them down and show them, you're just meeting them and escalating them past 11. So often during the tween and teen years, words are the opposite of helpful. So it's really tempting to engage and be like, let's talk about it for like four hours. Except that doesn't work. What does work? Do you want a glass of water? Can we go walk the dog? Here's another thing you can do. You can take a breath. Now don't tell them to take a breath because if you tell a 12 or 13 or 14 year old to take a breath, what are they gonna say? Do not tell me to take a deep breath. I hate it when you tell me to take a deep breath. But what you can do is you can show them how to take a deep breath. First of all, it'll regulate you. And second of all, it'll co-regulate them. So it could be a silent breath like this, or you could do it the way Vanessa does it in her house. Oh, there's a dose of empathy in that deep breath. But also you can just validate that they don't feel so great because kids who are freaking out, they don't feel proud of it. It doesn't feel empowering to them. It feels out of control. It feels embarrassing. And so you can simply say, hey, sounds like you're having a tough time. Let's just take a minute and see how you feel in a bit. You're not old enough to be in love. We got to talk about this because those of us who remember middle school or high school and had crushes or really intense, amazing relationships with another person, and I'm not talking about sex. I'm talking about the emotional connection with another person. You are in love. You do feel deeply about someone else. And to have a grown up who you trust shut down those feelings and tell you your feelings aren't possibly real or authentic is total BS. So you can start by trying to help them put words on that emotion. How do they label it? If they're calling it love, why do they call it love? What does that mean to them, right? I think we sexualize everything. When kids go into puberty, the world has decided that kids are instantly sexual. They're not. Love can look and feel like a whole bunch of things and it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with being sexually active. So let's help them break it down and start labeling how they feel. If you're trying to get underneath a kid's emotional reality, you can try something like this. What do you like about that person? What about them makes you feel good? Or what's the most fun thing you do with that person? Or what's special about talking to that person as opposed to your other friends or family? The more granular they can get with their language, the more they develop their own emotional intelligence, their own self-awareness, their own reflection on what a relationship means and sounds like and looks like. And that is really good work to do ahead of becoming an adult and having more and more intense relationships. Oh, honey, you're not fat. You're beautiful. There's so much wrong with that statement. But the biggest thing is that someone who's fat can't be beautiful. That's absurd. To say that those two things are mutually exclusive is not only wrong, it's offensive. What you really want to do is get underneath why do they feel the way they feel. And let's face it, as kids' bodies are changing, and their bodies are changing in every direction for many, many, many years, they're going to have lots of moments of discomfort, of low self-esteem. They have no idea where this body is going. They don't know how tall they're going to be, how curvy they're going to be, how hairy they're going to be, how zitty they're going to be. Every single kid going through puberty has lots of moments where they're being asked to believe us when we say it's all going to turn out okay. And they have no idea. We have no idea. So starting a conversation about what's underneath those feelings and where they're getting those ideas is probably your best first step in. And that might sound something like, huh, I've never heard you say that before. Where did that come from? 
Or are people talking about being fat at school? Get curious, use neutral language that's not attacking or defensive, and really try to put yourself in their shoes as opposed to coming at it from the top down and fixing or solving whatever you imagine the problem is. Now here's one more. The adults in the situation, we all have to examine our language and how we feel about ourselves and what we project. Our kids, they will do as we do and not as we say. Do you use the words fat and beautiful in the same sentence? It really makes a big difference if you not only own it, but you also talk to your kids about how maybe you're gonna change the way that you talk about all of this. For more content on parenting, visit oprahdaily.com.